Hello, thanks for joining me. It's quite a miserable, cold and wet day here. So it's a day for spending some time in the workshop and tinkering with the bikes. Now, quite a while ago, I posted a video in which I was uh, servicing the front brakes on my Triumph Scrambler XE. Uh, I, I uh, replaced the brake pads in the front brakes and, and cleaned up the brakes, just gave them a general fettle. And that's proved to be a very popular video. And quite a few people have messaged me saying, are you going to do a similar video on the back brake? And whenever anybody messages me asking me, are you going to do a video on this, that and the other, my answer is always, well, yeah, when I come to do the job on my bike, I will video it, but I'm not going to do the work just to make a video. That's not the nature of this channel. This channel just kind of records my you know, life as a, as a biker and the things I get up to. Um, so it's taken a while to get round to it, but I'll just point out that what I like to do on all of my bikes is at the beginning of the, uh, the, the summer and at the end of the summer, um, is to just give the brakes a general service and take the pads out, just clean up around the pistons, make sure everything looks okay, um, clean up the pads, replace the pads if necessary. And that's particularly important for bikes that I ride through the winter. I always do that in the springtime if I've been riding the bike through the winter. But anyway, right now it's, um, it's the end of uh, the summer season, we're well into autumn. Um, I will continue to ride this Triumph through the winter. Um, but I'm just going to have a look at the rear brake. So I don't know if I'll replace the pads. Um, what I'm going to do is just, first of all, remove the brake pads, have a look, and then you know I can go as far as disassembling the whole uh, um, rear brake caliper. We'll see if we end up going down that rabbit hole. If I'm happy with the way things are, we'll just leave it, and you know that may be a more um, complex video for later. So let's have a little look at the rear brake caliper and the brake pads then. Here we are looking at the uh, the rear brake caliper on my bike. Now this bike is the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE model and you can see that the rear brake caliper is mounted above the swing arm. This is back end of the swing arm here. It's mounted above the swing arm. I think on some of the other models of the Triumph uh, Bonneville range it may be mounted um, below. Um, so it's above on this model and also you will notice, particularly if you've, if you've watched my video of servicing the front brake, the rear brake caliper is an entirely different design to the front brake. On, on this rear brake, the brake pads are held in with this retaining pin. I'm just using this screwdriver as a pointer. Retaining pin here and the retaining pin is held in with two R clips here which you can just pull out. So I've got some long nose pliers here and you can just pull out those um, pull out those R-clips um, I'm at the wrong angle here, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera that was a problem so just pull out those two R-clips like that and then the retaining pin pushes through towards the wheel so it pushes from the outside through towards the wheel so I'm just going to use the end of these, these pliers and hopefully you can see here I'll just zoom in a little bit then you can see Okay, I've just zoomed in and I'm, I'm holding a torch here on it as well to get better light. So this is the, this is the, um, the brake pad retaining pin. So I'm just use something to push that through. Just use the, the end of these pliers because it's thin and just push it towards the wheel. And then I can catch it this side. I probably just have to pull that out by hand. Yeah, just pull it out by hand. So there's the pin. That's the, uh, the pin. Now that looks fine to me. It's not badly corroded, but I always clean them up on my wire wheel just buff them up to get any dirt and corrosion off them before I put them away so put that pin and the R-clips to one side you can reuse the R-clips this here is the spring again I'll just point with the screwdriver that's the, the, the spring that retains the well not retains the pads but stops the uh, pads from, from uh, rattling so I might just need to just lever the pads apart slightly maybe do it with this screwdriver just to just push the pistons back in slightly just to give a little bit of slack and then the pads should drop out and down. So that back one's come out there, you can see, just got that one out. And uh, this front one, then just need to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, that's it, and then pull that one out as well. So it's that easy, removing the two pads. I've just zoomed out a little bit again so you can see the whole colour because the thing I wanted to check, and it's easy to check once you've removed the, uh, the brake pads because then you've got movement, is that that is moving smoothly. So again, I've just uh, used my screwdriver to point. 
here there's a you can see there's a there's a, a rubber here and and down here as well on that then the the whole um, of the caliper is moving on two pins which should be greased and lubricated so that all moves smoothly so what I'm feeling for is that that moves freely and smoothly and it does so in actual fact I'm not going to disassemble the the brake caliper at this point if I was feeling that that was not very good then what I would do is take it all apart and then I could re-grease these uh, two pins and uh, make sure that um, you know I'm, I'm happy with the, the movement um, also let's have a look at the the pads so this is one of the pads here both fairly similar um, I would say it's about half worn that but you can see there's the grooves in here there's still plenty of life left in that pad and even though there's a bit of a corrosion around the, the back in there which is to be expected it's not too bad so again I'm going to clean this up on my wire wheel I've just got a wire brush wheel um, put it on it just gets all the corrosion off cleans it up then I'll put a little bit of um, brake cleaner on the surface wipe it over just to clean over the brake pad surface and then stick that back in now obviously if you were fitting new uh, brake pads then you would need to wind the pistons in a little bit further to be able to get the new brake pads in which you could probably easily do which with a piece of soft wood or if you do it gently with a uh, with a screwdriver so that you're not um, uh, damaging the pistons I refer you back to the um, the video that I did um, for the for the front brake there is no need if you're just changing the pads there's no need to remove the caliper if you do need to remove the caliper assembly then you're really going to have to remove the back wheel um, to do that so it makes it into a much bigger job got a brass wheel here brass wire wheel mounted on my pillar drill which I find is really good for cleaning up bits like these there's the retaining pin here and the pads I'll just give them a quick clean uh, on this before I put them back in um, I tend to use a brass wheel rather than a steel one because it's just a bit gentle on parts I don't want to be scratching them really just getting the dirt and the corrosion off them So it doesn't take long and it actually comes up very nicely if I can get the camera to focus in on that at, at close range you see so that's the pad retaining pin and uh, yeah that's come up quite nicely that's absolutely fine so I'll just uh, quickly do both of the pads as well and then uh, we'll put them back in the bike To, to show you because I've just cleaned up the, these pads and there's yeah, there's still a reasonable amount of life left on those but if I show you the back you can see hopefully if I turn it in the light you can see that the, the backing plates made out of some kind of compound that's got you know copper in it so I know a lot of people sort of smear a bit of copper grease on the back of the pads when they put them in and I found you don't need to um, with these pads I think you know they're made out of this kind of material because that basically does the, the same job um, yeah well that's my belief anyway if you're more knowledgeable about such things please uh, do put me right on that but anyway I'll do, I'll do the other pad uh, and then we'll get them back on the bike right there we are that's uh, both the pads cleaned up and a pin so we'll get back to the bike and get these put in Refitting the pads or fitting new pads if you put new ones in is the uh, reverse procedure of removing 
the old ones. So um, this little lug here fastens in at the front so you need to push it through until you engage that lug on a little lip inside the caliper and then you push up and you'll feel resistance against this spring here um, until you get this hole aligned with the hole in the caliper and then remember the pin goes in from the from the inside so I find it easier because the pin goes in from the inside fit the inside pad first so I'm just kind of guide, guiding that in with my hand till I feel it um, engage you, you've got to push up against that retaining spring and what I'm feeling for is engaging at the front on the little lip there we are that's it and push that up and then I'm going to push the pin through from the back which will then hold that pad in place but don't push the pin all the way through so I've got space then to put the outside pad in now when you put the outside pad in that's going to be a little bit tighter and that's where you might need to create a little bit of room by moving the moving the pistons in but again what I'm trying to do is get that um, front bit engaged that's it I can feel it's engaged then I push up at the back and then you can see the uh, retaining pin goes all the way through then I need to put the R clips back on so there was an R clip, you can reuse the old R clips. So there's an R clip goes on at that side and then there's another one goes on on the inside and clip that in. Just push that through till it clicks into place and that is it. Now because I've been pushing around on the pistons then it's important just to finish off just to pump the brake pedal a couple of times just to make sure that those pads are seated on the disc and then uh, particularly if you fitted new pads but it's a good practice to do it anyway check the fluid level in your rear uh, brake uh, reservoir just to make sure you're happy with the the reservoir so I'm just going to pump those uh, pump the brake pedal a couple of times and I can feel only took one pump there to um, reseat uh, those brake pads if you fitted new pads uh, It'll take a little bit of braking, just for maybe the first time you go out for a ride, just test the brake a few times until the, 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 um, the new pads sort of seat in against the disc. Because there's kind of uneven wear on your disc if it's an old disc, and so you need, your new pads need to sort of just wear to match the, the wear on your discs. But that's it, then it, it, just make sure that your um, brake um, hose and the ABS line are, are, are clipped uh, properly onto the um, swing arm. And that's it, it's a very simple job, isn't it? So, um, you know, if, if you've not done that job before and you're a bit uncertain, I hope that video has been uh, useful for you. Certainly been a useful sort of 10, 15 minutes uh, for me, just in, you know, checking the, the uh, I'm happy with the, the brake. That's absolutely fine. So going into the winter, that's fine. In the summer, uh, sorry, in the springtime, ready for next summer, I might actually take the uh, caliper off the bike, give it a much more thorough clean and, um, and you know maybe re-lubricate the pins we'll see so that's maybe a future video so hope you find that interesting hope you find it useful thanks very much for watching hopefully see you again soon bye